Okay, here's my setup. Uh, this is the Dutch Ware Chameleon. Uh, I started off years ago in a Hennessy Explorer, which was a great hammock. Uh, I learned a lot from it. And um, I had the opportunity last year to upgrade to, uh, to a, this is much lighter. The Hennessy's are a little heavier, but they're they're very rugged. They'll uh, they'll last. They'll, they should last you your lifetime camping. Um, so that's the uh, again the chameleon, and I had the camo. I went with the camo here because I like to stout camp a lot, and I don't want people knowing where I am. I just I just like doing that. And uh, unfortunately, years ago I got my these are underground quilts. This is my 30 degree with a two percent over stuff. Um, and I didn't, I just got orange. It's inside here anyway, and you don't see it. Now, this time of year, I don't use an underquilt because it adds too much weight to my uh, overall pack. So I, I always take my air mattress, always, because if you end up on the ground or you end up in the shelter, you, you know, you, you got an air mattress to sleep on. So this is my number one setup is the air mattress. And I can still, if you can, I don't know if you can see this, I still have it set up so that it's on a slight angle. When I'm in it, I can even, I can even pull it over even further. So I'm, I always get a flat lay here. Uh, and I'm a side sleeper, so I have no issues. Um, some of the options that I, I, I got with this was the two ridge line um, hangers here. I got to think now which one. I might have taken one off from Hennessy. I'm trying, I think this one here came from Hennessy. And this bottle, or the bottle holder came from Hennessy. I forgot which one. But anyway, uh, Dutch has Ridgeline organizers too. So this one here, I put my my water bottle in here. And sometimes I'll put my phone in here. I also went with these uh, Ridgeline and uh, storage uh, nets. And they come in handy. They have one at each end. I use these a lot every night I use them I throw I change in the hammock and I throw all my clothes up here that I've had that I've hiked in I throw all my my wet clothes up here in my body or whatever it seems to dry it out a little bit so that all goes up there on one end my head end I keep my puffy in here I keep my uh, an extra thermal top and then I keep my uh, P jar up here in the uh, in the head area um, so I don't have to once I'm in the hammock I don't have to get out till morning um, that works out pretty well I have a new pillow uh, this is the cocoon here um, I don't know if you can see that there you go yeah I, I had the I had the other one from uh, it's green I forgot I forgot who it, but but it has it has a flip top and I can never get the thing open when it gets cold. So, um, and a couple of guys on trail actually have ripped this rubber, trying to open it, actually ripped ripped their pillow, and they they lost their pillow. Uh, so I I went with this one here. It's got the little it's got the little screw valve, so that you can do you can you can when this is down and your head's on it, you can adjust the uh, pressure just by turning this. You don't have to undo that that flap, which again, when it gets cold, you uh, I have a heck of a time trying to open that. So I got rid of that, I, I have a new pillow. Uh, these are the X-PED pads. This is, a, this is like an R rating of four. It's a two and a half inch air pad. And um, this is the new version. You can tell by the honeycomb, the honeycomb pattern here. The old pattern, these seams, were letting go. I was doing a long trail through hike last year and I had a seam go way up by um, Watertown and uh, I called them. I told them I was on a through hike and uh, their, their baffles let go and no questions asked. They said, where would you like us to send you a new one? This is over a year old. Uh, I got them at REI. REI basically told me, "Sorry, I can't. They can't. They, they weren't going to help me. I had to call Xped directly." So I called Xped, and they said, "Where are you going to be? We'll send you out a new. We'll send you out one tomorrow." And um, I told them, I gave them the zip code and the town that I was going, my next town I was going to go through, and they did. It was there within one. They sent it overnight. 
I had a new pad overnight, which was well over a year old. Uh, it was a defect, and they honored it. So I really like X-Ped. I highly recommend X-Ped. In fact, my winter pad, which is the 4-inch, which is the 6.6R rating, is also X-Ped. And then my wife also has the same two uh, air mattresses also from X-Ped. And uh, she got hers replaced also because I, evidently there was a defect uh, two or three years ago up until that point they had a defect and um, it's on a case-by-case -case replacement um, situation with them um, but they replaced her too and they replaced well mine and actually went and they replaced mine but they replaced hers also uh, so it, that was really nice of them so I'm happy here with that. So this is my setup. Now when it gets cold along around 32, then I'll also bring my 20 degree on the quilt. I'll, I'll have that underneath here, but this time of year I don't, I don't do that. Uh, my Cuban fiber rain fly is from uh, Hammock Gear. Um, I believe it's Hammock Gear. Let me see if they have a patch here somewhere. I think it's Hammock Gear. Yeah, yeah, I got it from here at Hammock Gear. They, they kind of work with um, Dutch. Dutch sells the exact same thing, but Hammock Gear is the ones that make it. Uh, really happy with it. Uh, it's, it comes in, it's under a pound. I don't know what it is. It's like 10 ounces or something ridiculously light. And I have the doors. This is like the winter version. I have the doors on it that close right up. But right now, I have everything strapped open so I get a nice breeze coming through here tonight. Um, what I do on my tie outs too is I use bungee. So if the wind blows, you have some give. You don't have straight line as that's 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 um, you know staked into the ground. Uh, put too much tension on the on your stitching here. So I always have a bungee here. So there's a little bit of give. Um, and then I switch to my stakes. I, I use two stakes, four eight inch and four six inch. The eight inch are these aluminum. Oh, let me see if I can pull them out here for you. Oh man, it's in yeah. Okay, the. The eight inch of these aluminum stakes, I got these from from Maine. Uh, the people in Maine that make um, oh, I'm trying to think the uh, the the uh, the packs, the real light packs. They come out of Maine. I, I can't remember the name of them right now. I'm out on the trail, so I can't really look it all up. Um, uh, anyway, the, I, I got them from them, and then and then on Amazon. I believe it was Amazon, yeah. I have the six inch titanium. And I have those because some of the some of the you know sometimes you get into hard pan stuff and the little shepherd hooks they bend, they break, so I got rid of those. And plus they don't hold in this peat moss. So I'm going with those and I am really, really happy with them. Really happy. Let me show you what I do, how I set up. Let me put this down. This should work. Okay, what I do, let me undo this here. Real simple knot, you just pull it. After, after you have your, you know, setting up your top, you got the you got the bungee. Oh, and I also put these little ribbons on here. Every every one of my little um every one of my tie-outs, if you can see. They all have ribbons on. I'm tired of tripping all this stuff. So anyway, what I do is I set this up and I kind of hold the string roughly to where I wanna to where I wanna where the, where the top really looks good. You know, I have no creases anyway. I come off a little bit on an angle like this. And then I know I'm gonna have a stake in this area. So what I do is you take, you make a loop, make a loop like this. Now you have a loop. Take that loop and just all fl fl uh, flip it over and grab this main line. See that main line? Grab that main line. Now you take your little, uh, you take the stake, you put the stake in there and hold it down at the bottom. Don't put the stakes in like this because they're just not, it's going to end up being loose on you. So you. You want to put the line down here at the point where the point's going to go in the ground. What you do now is you just pull this bitter end. That locks it. See how I did that? Now you just stick this in the ground. Oops. 
that's what happens when you have it on a bungee. All right, so now you stick it in the ground like that. Oh, I hit a rock, so we move it over just a little bit. Uh, what happened here? There it goes, okay. And, and we're all set. That's how I do my stakes. And then the same thing, and then I use the eight, I have four eight inch and I have four six inch again. Uh, depending, I, it gives me a little leeway on the, on the type of um, ground that I'm working off of. And then usually in porch mode, I use my I use my uh, trekking pole here to hold this up. So when I'm laying in the hammock, I'm laying in the hammock like this. I get a view. I get a view of the water or whatever I'm supposed to be looking at. Oh, okay, let me show you this too. When I retire at night, I have nothing on the ground. Everything is picked up. So what I also do is I add another separate ridge line. This is uh, just cord here that uh, you'd use to hang your, your food bag. I just got extra and I run a separate line across. It's almost like a clothesline and um, I have a couple of carabiners on my backpack and then I hang. I hang everything off of this here like little this little ridge line. And uh, if I have wet clothes I hang this over it and uh, it'll, it'll all dry overnight. I put my boots, I hang my boots up here. My socks I'll hang over here so they'll air out overnight. Um, Everything, everything is off the ground. I have a little pad I put down here. I leave my Crocs because that's what I'm using my camp shoes. I will leave my Crocs right here. So when I get when I get out of the hammock in the morning, my Crocs are right there on the ground, and I just hop out. Um, so that's my setup. And then for my my suspension, I have this here. The, the this is the straps that come with the. Uh, Chameleon from Dutch, um, super light. I mean, you're talking a few ounces for each setup, and I did not cut it. They're 15 feet long, because I've been in areas where you have trees that are four feet uh, in circumference, and uh, and you don't know how far apart they're going to be. So I, I I keep my 15 feet. Um, so I've never had an issue setting up. Um, so a lot of people cutting six feet or eight feet off of these things and then you're going to have an issue in certain areas especially if you have large trees and they're spaced out you're going to have trouble finding the finding the area to hang i also went with these um, um super light carabiners i got these these i got these from dutch uh years ago um i believe they're from dutch what's the name on these things uh, can't read it right here, but they're super light. I like them easy, easy to take off, easy to hook up. And then again, for the, for, for I use these here, uh, I don't know what they are, beetle clips or whatever they are from Dutch. Um, you just hook, hook your uh, hammock end right here, right around here, locks in, uh, super easy to adjust. You undo, you take this hair off, you open up these two wings and you can slide them up and down. You close them and they, they pinch the, they pinch the uh, line right here, your strap, and it locks it in place. But I also put a little knot here just for backup. And you don't need it, but I do it. Plus it keeps it, keeps it from hanging off the ground. I don't like anything hanging on the ground. Spiders and stuff can, can crawl up and I try to eliminate all that. All right, so there's my setup. Highly like like the uh, top from Hammock Gear, uh, and then the uh, Chameleon from Dutch. I also have the winter cover that replaces the uh, net. I've never used it because uh, years ago I got the uh, cocoon, Hammock cocoon from Dutch wear, and I prefer that in the winter. Um, and I just leave my I leave my net on year round. I never take it off. So that's that's my setup for the, when it gets colder. Um, that cocoon is just really nice, really really nice, uh, and it and, and it gives it keeps the it, it wraps your underquilt also. So if you get any splashback, you're it, it 
it protects around the quilt. So it's it's um, it adds a little bit of air between you know the cocoon and your and your under quilt. So you get a little bit of insulation there. And if the wind's blowing, the wind isn't going to suck the suck any warmth out from your your under quilt uh, with that with that cocoon that wraps that wraps this whole hammock system. And again, Dutch sells those. He has those. Um, that's about it. If you have any questions, just leave them on my uh, at the bottom here, and I'll try to answer them at some point. Uh, but this is my system, and uh, it's taken me a while, but I got it down. Uh, we just came out of the Smokies a month ago. We had torrential rain, and um, uh, it, it, I thought I was going to have a problem, but nope, no problem at all. Uh, we I had to do a zero in the hammock. Uh, down south, the, we had torrential rain all day, so we 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 uh, just zeroed at camp, and uh, I did my cooking underneath here, and uh, it, it worked out very well. Uh, I didn't have it in porch mode though; I had it I had it more down on an angle, and uh, had no issues with splashback or any wind. Uh, I was nice and dry. Um, so something for you to think about. Okay. Mm -hmm.